All right, so I copied over that input statement, and I want to create a program that's going to work like a three-year-old. And so I'm going to call this my three-year-old simulator. So I'm going to put in a print statement, print. Welcome to being a three-year-old. And, but now I'm going to do something kind of interesting. So I'm going to put response. I'm going to set that equal to a blank space. So in other words, I have nothing in there. It's just set up as an empty piece of text. So I'm going to say while. So our loops, at least one way we can do it, is we're going to create that loop using a while loop. So while response is not equal to I'm going to use the phrase because and now I'm going to create a block and that block is going to be a loop and that loop remember has a couple of things we need to do and so that loop has to change somehow so we have a the loop control variable here is we're basing it on the on the response and we set that response equal to a blank to start with. So we prime that loop with a blank input. And then we're going to take an input. And we're going to say response is equal to input of the phrase, the famous phrase that all children ask, why? Put a new line in there so it moves it down every time. And so now everything in this loop, everything in here is going to repeat as long as that response does not equal because. And so now we've created a loop. And then outside of the loop, we're going to print a statement just so we know we've gotten out of there. Oh. <laughs> Okay, mom. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to save it as something. Welcome to being a three year old. Why? I don't know. Why? Help. Why? And so notice it's just repeating over and over again. And any number we put in there, that loop is going to run forever until I type in, how did I, did I do it as capital? I think I did. Maybe I didn't. What did I do? Oh, I put a period in there. Okay. And if I don't have that exactly the same, as long as it's not exactly the same, it's going to keep running that loop over and over and over again. So we could use those together. So now that we see how we could do a while loop, so a while loop doesn't isn't isn't hard to do. What if what if we did this? So we made a while loop and it and it looked for a specific response. So what if we took our entire program up here and we put that inside a while loop? So while repeat, maybe we use that value. is not equal to no 
And notice we'll we'll do repeat equals chunk chunk just so it has a default value of blank. So while repeat does not equal no colon, everything inside of this loop then is going to run. So to do that, I'm going to go down and I'm going to move all of this into the block. My print statements I'm not too worried about, but we'll move them in anyway. So, and notice that we need to end in twice then so that we keep our same formatting. And if we were using a better tool than this built-in text editor, we could just highlight this whole thing and we could actually just tab once. But we'll go through the trouble. So I'm trying to grab at the beginning of every one. So now we ask that question. Now, the other piece we need in here then is we need to get a new response. So input, so response equals, do I do response, repeat? Repeat equals input. Do you want to play again? Now, what's interesting though, remember that yes and no, the Y and the N, we probably could take that input and we could clean it up and we could make it all lowercase. Because remember, an uppercase is different, but just to show that we can run a loop, we're gonna we're gonna leave that one alone. We're going to run this and see if we can get this program to loop. That would be helpful if I did that. that. All right, so all of that should be in a block. Notice it's all indented. So let's see what happens. Run. Choo, 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 choo. Name repeat is not defined. Where did I put that? What did I do? Did I spell it weird? Okay. Try that. All right. You lose. Do you want to play again? <coughs> and I'm just going to put in any random variable. And because of the way this is set up, as long as I don't actually type in, it's probably going to keep going forever. And notice now I can play that dice game as many times as I want. And it's scrolling through there. We could even keep a counter of how many times. So if I wanted to add to this program, and I wanted to clean it up, and there's a lot of different things I need to clean up on here. This is a very quick little thrown together piece. So if I wanted to keep track of this, once that loop exits, I could even do something like this. So I could say counter equals counter plus one. So every time this loop runs, that counter comes out. And so we could do a print statement. Thank you for playing, comma, you played counter times. So we could add in a counter. We could see how many times they, they played. We could put that counter somewhere else, and I'll show you here in a second. So let's see if that works. Yes. Uh, counter equals counter plus one. What did I have to find? Line 29. So. so do it like that. So I'm just going to sit here and play this a few times and see what happens. 
and I'm going to type it in. Thank you for playing. You played 20 times. So great. We we can uh, we can keep track of how many times you played. We could keep track of how many times you won. So we could create a variable called one or win maybe equals zero. So we set it up by default at a zero now. And so we know that if you get a snake eyes, you don't win. But here at a seven, you do. So I'm going to go to the next line and say win equals win plus one. I'm also going to put it for the 11 because that also tells me that how many times I won. And so it's only going to run if it hits that particular item. So just, just for those two items. And then I'm going to put that down here. Print you won when times the space in there, just make it a little nicer. So we've learned a few new skills. Now we can create a, a functioning game of some sort. So F5. So I'm going to play for a few hands here. No. And now it says, thank you for playing. You played 25 times and you won once. Oh. Well, I'm going to try that again because I want to make sure that I didn't do something weird. But if I look up here, it doesn't look like I won a whole lot, right? So I'm going to rerun this. And I'm going to play it a whole lot of times. You played 75 times and you won 22 times. So we can keep track of that. We can put those counters in there and we can keep track of that. So the key on our loop, the key on this loop, we can put a while loop in and a while loop runs while this condition is true. And in this case, we said while it's not equal to in or no is what we shorten it to. So we can we can make our input and we can strip it down where we took just the first character and we could change it from uppercase to lowercase if somebody did it. But in this case it, it served our purpose. It kind of demonstrated that that loop. And in this case we looped this entire block of code. And so we actually have a functional program. This program simulates rolling two dice, and based on those if-then-else statements, we can actually tell if you won or lost. Now, it's certainly not the same as a dice game at a casino. We don't have second rolls. We don't have bets. We don't have any of these other pieces. But if you're just sitting down and rolling dice, and based on those assumptions, whether you win or lose, you can get some interesting values out of that even. So here we have that particular model. I want to change this, and I want to loop a specific number of times. Can I do it with a while loop? So I'm going to say, I'm just going to use our variable x. So for x, I'm going to say is equal to 0. And so I'm going to use it up here, and I'm going to just say, while x is less than 100, we're going to run this loop. Okay. So if I do this now, I need to take out this input down here, because we no longer need that, do you want to rerun this again, yes or no. And I'm going to save it and run it. Bless you. Oh, wait, that's got to be way more than 100, right? Why is, it, why is it continuing to run? Ah, so that sentinel value, and if you run into this, Control-C will break it. So I don't have anything that changes 
this value for x. x comes into this as 0, never changes. So I need down here, maybe I'm going to say x equals x plus 1. Now, we also are using that counter, so we're really doing it twice, but just to demonstrate, x equals x plus 1. And we could do that for a 1,000 loops if you wanted to. We could say, all right, let's see what happens. So it's going to go a 1,000 times. We'll see how long it takes. It's going to take it a few seconds, and it runs. And it says, thank you for playing. You played a 1,000 times. You won 233 times. Great. So while x is less than 1,000, so if I put that number in there, we actually did roll it 1,000 times, right? That makes sense. That's kind of fandy. And so by doing this, what we actually have done is created a very quick, what we call a Monte Carlo simulation. So we created our game. We ran it an x number of times. So we might try this swapping out that input for a set number of loops, and then we can see if we get a similar result. So we can see if, if our program works. Because the last time we had 233 results that said that they were positive. So if I run it again, we'll see if we win that many times again. So in this case, we won 234 times. So it seems to be we have about a 23% chance of winning in this particular game, somewhere around there. And so we could run this over and over and over again. But those loops, we have to be sure that we deal with that century variable. And so page 65 talks a lot about that century variable, updating it, and where we're at. All right, so we're not yet done with this chapter, but you do need to work along with us. You do need to work in this chapter and look at it. We will finish up this chapter and look at the at the homework assignment a little bit on Thursday I wanted to get where we were able to build a loop and experiment try these things try to do something with it see what happens you could create a program very similar to this where you took every result possible and you could see what the odds are by running that Monte Carlo simulation what are my odds of, of having a one or a two or a four or a six and you can actually see how that happens and how you have more of those in the sixes and the sevens than you certainly do with the twos and the twelves. So as a reminder, this week you also have a discussion board. So you have an assignment, and there is a discussion board this week. So week nine. So this week you're building a resource list. So you guys are building some kind of resources where you can go out and you can find additional information. So if I need to figure out how to run something, I wanted to create, maybe you looked at this and you said, hey, I play PyGal, and I'd like to create a game that, that simulates PyGal. You could do that. Or if you say, you know, I play whatever game. I want to make a simulation of it. Where do I go to get resources? And so the one I pulled off the table is the best resource out there. So I said, nope, you can't use python.org. But there are thousands upon thousands of Python resources out there. So you need to find one, tell us about that resource and why it might be good. So the one thing I don't require this week is you don't have to respond to anybody, but you do have to find that resource that says this is a, a great place to look at it. So there, there are, again, hundreds and hundreds of them out there for Python. Um, but it just it'll just give you another built-in resource. So when it's nine o'clock on Sunday and you decide to start your assignment that's due at ten. Not talking to anybody there, I'm making eye contact with you. But when you do that, you'll have some additional resources. So make sure you do that. And make sure you're working along and trying these things. And it can be kind of fun. So like I said, I, I created this one here just to simulate. If you go in and you, you change this a little bit, you can actually do a count of what happens. You don't have to show every time on screen. You could do a very quick counter. And so you could have a counter for twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, seven, eights. And you could do a simulation run 
and you could see how those different values show up with different variables. All right, any questions off the top here? All right, enjoy our once was supposed to be really warm day, but now it seems to be.